talk about advanced geoprocessing with QGIS. This is more advanced and applied and uh, will give you more of an idea of how to use QGIS in order to make spatial calculations. Um, when I say spatial calculations, I, I mean mostly in the context of taking two geometries or more than two types of geometries and being able to say, for example, what percentage of one geometry is covered by another. Um, one reason you might want to do this is to look at transportation accessibility. So that is what I'm going to use in this case. So I have a shapefile of subway stations available here that I will open. These are subway stations in New York City. And I have the census tracts for New York City. And I've opened both here. Uh, unfortunately, the subway stations shapefile that we're using does not include the Staten Island Railroad, so we will not get anything in Staten Island in this case. Um, but this is for demonstration purposes. If if you were doing this for the whole of New York City, you'd probably want to track down those stations. So. Um, one thing you might say want to know about um, about each census tract, say. The reason I'm using census tracts in this case is that they're relatively small, which is helpful for making choropleth maps. Um, you generally wouldn't want to do this by city council district unless you had a good reason to talk about city council districts. And also it's helpful to use census tracts in this case because you once you're done you can join the tracts with other census data so you'll be able to say make statements about the demographics of the census tracts in relation to this data so the first thing I'm going to want to do is say um, I want to know what percentage of each census tract is within, say, half a mile or a quarter of a mile, let's go with a quarter of a mile, of a subway station. So first we'll want to do a buffer of the subway stations. And the way you do that is through vector geoprocessing tools. Select buffer and pick subway stations, um, and then pick the buffer distance. In this case, we want 13, 20 feet, 5,280, yeah. Okay, so the buffer distance is in the units of the layer you're working with. In this case, we're working in State Plain Long Island, so I know that it's in feet. If you were using another projection, you'd want to check on that. And I'm going to dissolve, dissolve the buffer results because I don't want the individual shapes of the buffers. I actually want them to all bleed together. And finally, I'll pick an output shapefile. And I'll call it buffered stations. So that should be relatively quick, and we can see our buffer on top. I'm actually going to remove the subway stations that are not buffered. Um, okay. So this gives you an idea of which of the area that is covered by our buffer, which is a quarter mile from any subway station in New York City, and. I'm going to next, so somehow I want to be able to calculate the area of each census tract that is covered by this buffer. Maybe it's easier to see if I turn on the transparency just a little bit. Okay, so I want I want to see the, for, for example, this census tract, I want to know 
how much is covered by this buffer, which is a quarter mile from these two subway stations. <clears throat> so there are a number of ways to do this. Today I'm going to do an intersect of the two. So we have a buffer and now we're going to intersect them. You go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tools, Intersect. The input is the census tracts. And then I'm going to intersect on the buffer. You're going to create a ton of shapefiles when you're doing this kind of work. And I recommend naming them logically. Uh, in this case, I'm keeping the name roughly the same as the order here. So tracts, intersect, stations is what I'm going to do. So I know it's census tracts with an intersect on the stations run. And that might take slightly longer than the buffer. Okay, so that probably looks a whole lot like what we just did um, when we overlaid the buffer with some transparency, but actually it's completely different. So, um, so with the buffer you can see situations such as this where the buffer extends out into the water. When I turn off the buffer you can see that it's no longer there. It's just the part that overlaps with the census tracts. Um, I actually don't need this buffered shapefile anymore, so I'm going to remove it. So I just have the census tracts and the result of intersecting the census tracts with the buffer of the stations. So how do I calculate the area of these? I'm going to calculate the area of the intersections by opening the attribute table. And I'm looking at the attribute table. And you see that it has um, it has new columns from the stations that we don't actually need right now. And since we don't actually need them, I'm going to delete them to get them out of the way and I need to enter edit mode, as this says right here, before I do that. So I entered edit mode, and now I can come in here and delete it. If you hold shift after clicking the first one, you can select multiples, and now I'll exit edit mode and hit save. Okay, so now I just have the attributes from the census tracts table. To add the area as a new column here, I'm going to open the table, uh, the field calculator. Sorry about that. So, in the field calculator, I want to create a new field. I want to call it area. And I want to make it a real number. A decimal number. Um, this will allow for digits after the decimal point. And this comes in handy for a couple of reasons. For one, um, for now we want to keep it as accurate as possible. So um, the precision is the number of decimal digits of the digits after the decimal point. So let's make it two. And then we need to type an expression in here that creates that calculates the area for each feature. You can either type that in, so I know that it's dollar sign area, or 
if I wasn't sure about that, I can search over here under the functions for area. And you see the results come up here. These are some recent ones that I did, but you see that area comes up under geometry. And I'll double click on that, and it adds it just the same as if I typed it in myself. And when I hit OK, you see that a new column is added to the attribute table. Um, you might also notice that we're now in edit mode. So if we go back to the map, um, we should be in editing mode. We are, see. Those red X's mean we're in editing mode. So I'm going to exit out of edit mode and save it. Okay, so now we have the area of the um, intersection between the census tracts and the buffer of the train stations, and we want to move it over to the census tracts. So right now the census tracts, um, we only have the geo ID and the geo name essentially, and we want to move the intersection area over. Um, So the simplest way to do this would be to uh, do a join, an attribute join. Since we have two columns that match based on this geo ID, right? Uh, the geo ID should be the same in all of these. So that should be fine. So I'm going to go back out and um, Go to the properties for my layer for the census tracts, not the intersect. And I'm going to go to joins, add a join between this and the intersect, and pick geo ID for both. And in this case, I don't want to move all of those columns over because most of them will be redundant. So I'm just going to pick area, and I'm going to give it a prefix so that I can tell it apart from other potential area fields, such as the one we'll add soon. So I'm just going to call this um, inter underscore. Um, I would call it something longer, but you can't really with a shape file. So that will have to do. I'll hit OK, and hit OK again. And now when I open the attribute table for this one, you see that the area has come over. Um, I see a couple that are null, and I want to figure out why that is. So I click on this one to select it, and I see, oh, it doesn't have any intersection. Um, that's good to know. Is that the same for this one? Yes. OK. How many are null? Oh, a lot are. OK. So these. Um, this gives you an idea of which uh, census tracts have are not within a quarter mile of a subway station pretty quickly. Um, this obviously this is just rough and dirty. I didn't I didn't select all of them. I could if I wanted to, but I, that's not the point of what I'm trying to do right now. Um, so actually, uh, sorry. Let me open that attribute table again. So I have the census tracts and I have the intersected area, I need to also add the area here. So I'm going to open the field calculator. And remember, I'm in the original census tracts, so this area should be larger or equal to the intersect area. Uh, so I'm going to create another field. I'm going to call this area again. I'm going to make it real again. And this time I'll just type area because I looked it up last time. Okay, um, oops, okay, so what I did there was I had some selected, and I had this checked because it was checked by default, uh, so I'm going to uncheck that and instead choose to update the existing field, go to area, and do area again. So none of them should be null because they all have shapes, so they all have areas. Um, okay, 
So it looks like we have areas and intersect areas now. Good. And I want to add a column for the percentage that is covered by the intersect. So I'm going to open the field calculator once again, create a new field. Remember to uncheck this if you have any features selected. And I'm going to say per inter um, percentage intersect. And I want that to be real also. We can bump the position up a little bit more um, than usual here. And I'm going to go to the fields and values. And I want to divide the intersected area by the area. And when you do it like that, that's invalid. We need a slash between the two. Slash is divide. Um, okay. So let's try that. What happens when I hit OK? Um, okay. So now I see that this is 0.56. It's actually 56.8%. Um, I see some 1.0s. I see some nulls. The nulls will be there when the intersect area is null. Let's sort this and we'll see. Let me deselect. And um, so going from smallest to largest, bunch of nulls, and then we see some percentages that make sense, and we see nothing over one. And that is something to be very aware of. If you had some that were over one, then I would say that you did something wrong at some point, because you can't have a census tract that is more than 100% within a quarter mile of a subway station. That doesn't make any sense. Um, okay. So we're back in edit mode as the field calculator likes us to be. I'm going to unclick edit and hit save. And I'll hide the intersection of the train stations. And now we're just left with that original census tracts file. Um, but if we open the attribute table, we'll see that it is the one we've been working with. Um, and now I want to style it based on that field. So we'll go style, graduated and pick the percentage. So it's the percentage that is within a quarter mile of a subway station. And um, let's go with purples. And hit it, classify. Let's pick something other than equal interval and apply it. OK, so. <clears throat> So this is kind of the picture we get of the city when we just include the census tracts that have some part of them within a quarter mile of a train station. Um, the darker ones in this case are more have more of the census tract within a quarter mile of the subway station. This part of Manhattan probably not very surprising, and it roughly looks like the subway station lines. That That is reassuring. That indicates that we did this correctly. Um, the reason a bunch of the census tracts disappear entirely is because they had null values in the attribute table for the field we're using. So remember, the per inter field is null. So um, so there, there, there are a couple of things you could do about this. You could either leave it as is and say that's fine, um, but or and then you would say overlay this on top of a, another map of census tracts. For example, we could bring the census tracts in again and style um, these differently to show that they are. Um, they have a very low degree of accessibility, say. Um, that's 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 one choice you that's kind of up to you. So if you wanted to do it that way, that's a pretty reasonable way of doing it. Um, the other way might be let's fix our attribute table because null actually doesn't make as much sense as zero in this case. So you could go to um, you could select the features where per enter is null 
So we will go to Fields and Values, select per enter, and double click on it, and say per enter is null. And I'll hit select. So now I've selected all of these. And then I'll go back to the field calculator and say, this time I actually do want to only update these features. I'm going to hit update existing field. I'll pick per enter. And this in this case, I just want all of them to be zero. Um, so that's why it's important that you only update the selected features. Okay, so now we have a bunch of zeros instead of nulls. I'll save that. And now when we restyle this and reclassify it, um, all right, they're selected. That's why they're showing up like that. All right, so deselect. Yeah, so now you have the census tracts with their percentage of um, the percentage of the land area that's within a quarter mile of subway stations. From here, you could say um, you could select out just the ones that have zero coverage, or just the ones that have below. 25% coverage or something like that, and then you could run some demographics on those by joining the census tracts with census data. You could do other things like that. Um, so, so this is kind of the general approach. Remember we used a few types of geoprocessing. We used buffers to, um, to create a buffer around the train stations, and we used intersects to find the parts of the census tracts that are within a quarter mile of subway stations. And then we did a bunch of field calculator work to get the percentages. And we also used an attribute join at one point to pull the data over from the original census tracts or into the original census tracts from the uh, version where we cr calculated the area, which was this version here. Okay, so that's advanced geoprocessing with QGIS.